Come on and meet the Mets. Meet the Mets. Step right up and greet the Mets. Bring your kiddies, bring your wife. Guaranteed to have the time of your life. Because the Mets are really something the ball. Knocking those home runs over the wall. East side, west side. Everybody's coming down. Now, let me tell you why we played that song, because I have several Met fans who, when they were sub-500, way sub-500, or were just talking to me about the pitching, about how, and I, and I, and the old classic thing was, let me you know, get back to you when the Mets are doing all right. Now, this is a payback. The Mets are over 500. And uh, so there you go. You heard the full song, Meet the Mets. Now, let's bring in Mike Kazi. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Now, they're beating the teams they have to beat now. <laughs> They're winning. <laughs> they have to beat everybody. I know, <laughs> but, but they're well. They're above five hundred at least. You got to give them credit. Eh. I know it's tough. It's tough, but I'm not talking about the the general manager. I'm talking about the players. The, uh, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, they have a nucleus of good players. Yeah. Um, they needed to make a move to make themselves better, to make themselves close to being a contender. They didn't do it. Uh, there, there's a lot of holes on this team. Um, Canoe Cano tore his hamstring. He's done. Goodbye. I mean, he, he just started hitting for the first time in 87 years, and now he's gone. I mean, that, that, that was a bad move. But you, you have a good nucleus with Conforto and McNeil and the first baseman and, and, and uh, a couple other guys. But there's still a lot of holes in this team, and especially the bullpen. So, yeah, they're beating teams like the Marlins and the Pirates, who are the two worst teams in the National League. But, you know, you, you have to beat the Braves and the Cubs and the Cardinals and the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. And, you know, th those are things that they're not going to do. All right, so the Mets won their doubleheader. Boston won, the Yanks won, and uh, Tampa Bay lost. Uh, but uh, really, you, you look at the, the schedule, everything's decided except the wild cards, really. Oh yeah, they have been. Yeah. I mean, it, it really, it really has been. The National League Central is the only division where someone other than the, the team that's leading the division has a shot. Um, like we've been saying all along, the Dodgers, the Braves, the Astros, the Yankees—they're winning their division. Um, Cleveland has a shot to catch the Twins. Other than that, the dice cast. Yeah. Um, you know, pe people can get all giddy about the Mets all they want, but. They have a lot of teams to climb. They've they've climbed to within two game, two and a half games of of the last wild card. They have pitching, so if they get to the wild card, they're dangerous. But the Mets are the type of team that, you know, okay, they went out and they swept the Marlins in a doubleheader. They can come out today against the Marlins and get beat ten one. You, you never know what to expect with the Mets. They are playing better. They have a good nucleus, but they're far from being a contending team. All right. Let's see. What else, what else do we do we're doing sports here? Um, um, what else is going on? There's no Saratoga today. There's no Saratoga. And I'm not going to talk about the Yankees. Yankees beat Baltimore. That's, like, that's, you know, that's, just, that's a useless game. Uh, well, it, it is and it isn't. I mean, yeah, they beat Baltimore like they're supposed to beat it in, in, the, in the home run capital of the yeah. world. Yep. Um, the Yankees hit a, couple, a bunch of home runs again last night. Um, but, but the thing you have to look out, again, is the start in pitching. Tanaka went five innings, gave up ten hits and five runs, all earned. It's not good. Yeah. I no. mean, be, beating the Orioles, you got two different things here. If, if the Mets go out and beat the Orioles, it's a good thing. If the Yankees go out and beat the Orioles, it's expected, and you have to see what, how they beat them. Because giving up five runs and five innings for Tanaka against the Orioles is not good because he's expected to beat the likes of whoever they play in the playoffs, Minnesota, Cleveland, Houston. He's not going to do it. Um, it it's going to have to be a slugfest, and, and namely Houston and Cleveland has good starting pitching, which is going to give the Yankees trouble. So these starting pitchers who they didn't deal for, they have to get the ones that they have to produce. 
and they're not. They're still not producing. So, you know, you're winning the battles, but the main thing for the Yankees is you have to win the war. And right now, um, it doesn't look like they're going to win the war unless they score double-digit runs in every game they play. Mm, that's the whole thing. They're going to, if, if the Yankees are going to advance, they're going to have to advance uh, scoring eight runs a game, nine runs a game. Yeah, and yeah. like we said and you said, when you play teams that have good pitching, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen every night. And it has to happen every night because it's a short series where you have to win four, seven, three, and five. Yeah. So it's up against you. So they, they need some help. They def, they, they, like I said, they're winning the battles, but you have to win the war. And the good, the good thing for the Yankees last night is Chapman showed up. He pitched one inning. He only gave up one hit, and he struck out the side. So that's encouraging for them. All right. And like you said, there's no Saratoga, so there's not much else really to talk about. Uh, football. Back, no. huh? yeah, yeah, football. Oh, I hate that. That's, that's the <laughs> nastiest word of, in the world. They're back. They're back in camp, Mike. Yeah, they're back in camp. <laughs> God bless them. I know. God bless them is right. Won't be long before they're playing those scrimmage games. Yeah. I, I, was, I went out the other night to the pizza shop, and I look up, and there's a football game on. I'm like, what is this, on tape? They said, no, it's, it's real. It's the Hall of Fame game. I'm oh, like, right, oh, my Fame. God, it started already. Well, you see what also has started already? That, Football's uh, getting like hockey. It never ends. <laughs> it really does go on for a long time, doesn't it? Yep. Um, and I just I, I want to make sure I read this right. Hang on a second here. I want to make sure I read this right before I before I repeat it again. I, I should have left it up here, but I didn't. Okay, come on. Let's see. Where, where is this? I think I can find it now. Oh. It's already the Browns coach who leaks information to the public. It's, it's start. It's it's. Started, I guess uh, what's his name's going to be gone soon, huh? It started already. It started already. <laughs> See, it's it's the time of year. Football's like kindergarten. You're dealing with infantile minds. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a joke. It really you, is. you have to tell people not to leak. Don't 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 leave your playbook on the plane. Don't leave your films on the bus. It's come on. And who do you think you, that? What are you, what are you dealing with here? Who do you think are you that, dealing with adults or five year olds? And who do you think that comment was really issued towards? <laughs> I'll give you one guess. He wears number thirteen. <laughs> Probably. All right. I'll check with you tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. Take care, Mike. Mike Cosby with a check on sports this morning here on the Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio.